come to the Dark World. You know Dark World is a GX deck, actually, that, that no one thinks about when they talk about GX, but it's actually a GX deck. It's actually not even a deck from the GX era, it's, uh, it's the villains. And then they made them into cards. What is going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Spanko, and we're actually at the Age of Overlord sneak peek event. People are literally playing this on us. Like, it's round four right now. I'm 2-2. Two -two. And uh, if you guys watch the vlog, you guys, uh, I don't know if the vlog's out before this or after this, but I didn't do too hot today. However, there are some new cards that came out today, uh, Gen and Ken specifically, that I really wanted to show off. These cards are absolutely insane, and uh, it makes a deck that I don't think I've showcased on the channel for a while really relevant. So, the deck that I'm talking about today, of course, is the one and only Dark Worlds. Dark Worlds is a deck that I haven't showcased in a while, and Ken and Gen make this deck absolutely insane. It makes the hand loop build of the deck so so powerful right so let's get into it and then i think you guys will start to see where this energy lies so first things first is we're playing a uh, three of the rainbow this is like one of the most important uh names to play and so that's why we're playing the three i mean i, I wouldn't not max out on this is the most important one now the one that i kind of want to talk about is grapha so grapha is a card that you can play two or three of i decided to only play two just because we're not playing trade-in there's a lot of other draw cards in the deck now and when you're not playing trade-in this kind of becomes like a brick for you in hand and so that's why i'm kind of just like playing the two I don't want to see the level 8 as much. You're drawing so much in this deck anyway that when you, you're going to see him when you need to see him essentially, right? So that's why I'm only playing the 2. And then I'm also playing 2 Silva. So initially, like you could play 1 Silva and then 3 of this. But because of Ken and Gen, the hand loop is so, so powerful and it's so easy to resolve now. So that's why we're playing the 2 Silva, of course, getting that hand loop combo going. You're always hand looping for 4 at a minimum, which is absolutely insane, right? Every combo, you're going to try to do this twice. Hand loop for 4, uh, you're winning the game, right? So 2 Silva. Then we're playing 3 of the Genta. So Genta, of course, from hand, it gets you to your field spell. Field spell is not a hard once per turn. When it's banished, it's kind of like a giant Rex. It summons itself back onto the field. And it's really important that's a level 4. So in this build specifically, you guys are going to see I actually focus on the level 4 monsters more than the level 8 monsters. I know people typically play like Bigfoot and Thunderbird because those are good going first and good going second. But uh, in this build, I think because of Age of Overlord, cards like Dweller and a lot of the rank 4s are really important, especially into Tier Limits format and whatnot. So for that reason, I really wanted to focus on the 4s. And Genta, of course, helps a lot because it's a 4 that special summons itself out to the side of the field. We're also playing 3 Snow, very important. I don't think you wouldn't play 3 Snow. Uh, then we're playing one of the bays. So again, like I said, this could be Brow, but I'm actually choosing to play bays instead because it's a rank 4 extender, or a level 4 extender that makes rank 4s. So that's why I'm playing this. And then we're playing the one uh, Ceruli. Ceruli is, of course, really good. Helps you play around cards like Imprim and whatnot. Puts itself onto your opponent's side of the field. Uh, can and can do that for you as well. So that's it for the Dark World monsters, though. This is all that you need. You're always going to see them because as long as you go through half your draw engine, you're good to go. Moving on to the spell cards, we're playing three gates. This is definitely a card that you can play at two. The reason I like to play three is because it's not a hard once per turn. So you just keep activating them. You keep drawing cards. Absolutely insane. We're playing two corridor. So we're only playing two, not three, because unlike all the other Dark World cards, this is the only Dark World card that's a hard once per turn. And because it's a hard once per turn, even though seeing it in your opening hand can be really good, because you're drawing again, like I'm gonna keep saying this, but because you're drawing four or five times a game, um, more than four or five times, you're probably drawing like eight to 10, maybe 12 cards in a turn. And so for that reason, you're always gonna see the Dark Corridor when you wanna see it. So that's why I'm only playing two. You didn't wanna, like if you, if you saw this in your opening hand playing three, you activate it. And then when you start drawing cards, you draw multiples of these, it's not as good anymore. So that's why I like playing the two. Then we're playing the one archives, of course. This is all you need. I just think one is enough. And then the one obsession, of course, as well. So that's it for the spell cards for the Dark Worlds. And then uh, we're getting into three Gen and one Ken, the brand new cards from Age of Overlord that absolutely make this deck insane. So if you guys don't know, Ken and Gen have the same effect, essentially, where when you summon one, you special summon the other one to your opponent's side of the field. And then when they're special summoned, they have an effect. Now, the reason you're playing three Gen and one Ken is because you're going to want to see this and you're going to want a special Ken out. So Ken, when he's special summon, it makes your opponent draw two cards and discard one card. Now, why is that crazy? It's because it's making my opponent's card discard my cards, which obviously synergizes with a lot of the Dark World monsters and synergizes with Silva because that's how you start ripping a bunch of cards out of your opponent's hand. And that's insane also because you're getting through your deck, you're getting your Dark World effects, you're also going to get your danger effects off, which are really nice. So that's why it, it's just absolutely insane. So you're playing three Nessie, of course, uh, two Troop, Two Mothman, of course, sticking with the level 4 theme. We really want to get into rank 4s. So that's why I'm playing 2 and 2. Also, uh, Troop is a fiend. So you can actually banish it for uh, the gates. Because gates can banish any fiend. So this in the graveyard, it banishes it. It's like fodder for gate. And again, this is going to be able to trigger these. It's going to be able to trigger your Dark Worlds. Absolutely insane. 
And then of course just one jack and uh, one suit. I think this is pretty uh, self-explanatory, pretty standard here. Uh, so that's it for the dangers. But Ken and Ganon themselves are absolutely insane. And um, the reason, I think I mentioned this earlier, but you're only playing one of this and three of this, because this card you don't actually want to special summon to your opponent's side of the field. This is of course always better. This is better to see, this is better to summon. And just so if I wasn't clear earlier, I do want to say that because you're summoning Ken to your opponent's side of the field, it says your opponent draws two and discards one. But because it's on my opponent's side of the field, I now become the opponent. I hope that makes sense. I become the opponent, so I discard two, draw one. Okay? Or draw two, discard one. Sorry, I should say. So, I hope that makes sense. Does that make sense? I think that makes sense. Hopefully. Anyways, read the cards. They're very, very powerful cards. Then, uh, I'm playing two Kaiju. Uh, I decided to play just two Radiant because when you're going second, it's just a card that helps you break boards. This can definitely be more extenders. I just felt like I needed something. So two Radiants. You only play two because, again, you're drawing so much. You're going to see this when you need to see it. So two Radiant. Uh, three Triple Tactics Talent. So this one, I'm uh, very convinced you need to be playing three of this. So, of course, this card works only when your opponent activates a monster card. So typically, you're waiting for your opponent to activate a hand trap. Let's say you're going first. You're typically waiting for your opponent to activate a hand trap. But we have a card that I mentioned earlier, Monsieur Ken. So because we're summoning Ken to my opponent's side of the field, then my opponent's, because now it's my opponent's card, okay? My opponent is making me draw two and discard one. My opponent's monster activated, so TTT is live. So Ken makes TTT live, okay? Hopefully I explained that properly, but that's why TTT is so good, because it's good going second, of course. It's one of those cards that's so good going second, but then going first, it's so powerful because you're able to set it up yourself, which is really, really nice. So three TTT, and then for more consistency, uh, one Rota to search it again, and then one called by the grave to stop hand uh, That's it for the main deck. It's 40 cards in the main deck. The only thing that I would change if I were to change anything, or if you want to change anything, I should say, is that you could swap these for more extenders, but I feel like you need some kind of board breaker going second. So that's why I like the radius. But that's it for the main deck. 40 cards in the main deck. So moving on to the extra deck now, uh, we're playing two of the Grafa. This card is absolutely insane. This is a card that you always want to end on. Typically, your boards are going to look like this. So you're either going to end on one of these plus a Griffin. Um, so you can Griffin lock plus with this, or you can end on this plus an apple and uh, essentially if you're hand looping your opponent for four cards you are gonna have more negates than they're gonna have cards to play with right so uh, that's why uh, this card is so good of course so two grafa uh, one akashic this card just helps you balance cards once are used to draw cards a lot of these are just utility uh, dark is really good as well all your monsters are dark so it can come up in certain matchups uh, muckcracker is very important for your combo so you have to be playing muckcracker uh, this card is absolutely insane one unicorn one phoenix and then one griffin of course a lot of the time because this is a link based deck you can actually just have these co-linked a lot of the time and you can get the draw effects off of these as well uh, especially with muckcracker like you could do stuff like this then make unicorn etc etc so um that's really good they're multi-use which is really nice this is i think one of the few decks that can use the draw effect as well griffin of course you want to end on a lot of time when you can uh one bls because you're playing big level eight monsters you make this it's really powerful uh one of the underworld goddess when you're forced to go second you make this to out any towers monsters and it's really really powerful one apple which you want to end on a lot of time with this if you're not ending on uh griffin with this you're ending on this one baguska one dweller like i mentioned the rank fours are just so powerful especially to get the tier and stuff so we're playing these and then lastly the one dugaris just help you draw more cards and set up those like really insanely powerful boards so that's it for the extra deck i think it's pretty self-explanatory a lot of it is just a uh, utility because you really just want to end on grafa plus either apple or griffin and as long as you're getting to that board you're pretty much winning the game anyway right so that's it for the uh extra deck how about sp little knight and what did that do to me? They're really expensive right now. Contact fusions uh, off. You can probably play that. Okay, come here, come here. Let me show you guys. Let me show you guys. Listen, okay? They're expensive. But let me show you guys. Okay, if anyone does happen to pull an SP Little Knight and they're better than me, swap these for IP and SP Little Knight. Okay? That's what you want to do, all right? And I know we're at the over age of all the sneaky. And now that I think about it, I probably should have just borrowed it for the deck profile. But... If you don't have SP, and I know that card's really expensive, you can play Phoenix and Unicorn. If you do have SP, you play IP and SP. Cool. Now, uh, we are going to go into our side deck. So for our side deck, we're playing three Lava Golem. So the deck, if you guys notice, doesn't really have a normal summon outside of Gen. So when you're going second, uh, Lava Golem is one of those really powerful cards that you can just break your opponent's boards with. Uh, 3DD Crow, going second, of course. I'm afraid of Tier Limit. I think that deck is really good. But then this is also really good into Unchained. It's really good into just a lot of decks in general. So 3DD Crow purely as well. Uh, so this card is really good. Um, then, of course, for more going second cards, Harpies and Lightning Storm. Uh, you don't have a lot of backward removal in this deck. So this just helps you against backward decks. 
this is a card that I love siding in when I'm when I'm going first into game three. So I don't care about any of the cards effects on the field. Like I don't care about any of the effects on the field. I care about them all in the graveyard. And if you can play skill drain and then just set up a big board, your opponent is probably not gonna be playing through it. Yes, you might be saying, oh, but skill drain is gonna negate your extra deck monsters. Sure, but if you're ending on a bunch of 3k bodies and your opponent can't actually out those bodies because of the skill drain, then you're winning the game anyways. And then lastly, for going second, uh, three evenly mad. Good into Labyrinth, which is really popular right now. Good into Rescue Ace, of course, which is a really powerful deck. Uh, but again, I will say with my side deck, so this is my side deck, I will say that side deck is always going to be up to personal preference. If you guys go to your locals and your locals are all back row players, play more back row hate. If your locals is all, uh, you know, combo decks, then play a lot of combo hate. But I just want to show you guys that side deck that kind of touches up on a little bit of everything. So that's it for the deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed. Dark World is a deck that if you guys really wanted to play, bro, I'm going to be real with you. Where are these cards? I thought these cards were trash. I read them and I'm like, yo, these cards suck. There's no reason to ever play these. But in Dark World, they're just so broken. So you, you have to be playing these. But thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. And uh, shout out Alpha again for being the best cameraman in YouTube history. Um, that's really all I gotta say. Oh, big shout out to Mandeep as well. The reason I'm giving Mandeep a shout out is because I only brought two of my tactics. I didn't bring my third and he's letting me borrow the third for the profile. So, shout out to me. So, thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, thank God. I don't know. Peace.